So anyhow, the situation is that uh, there is another way to depict the mind. It, it's not that the mind is like this, but this is an what could be called an ideogram. <laughs> now I need to put the tele. But basically, there is another way to depict the mind, which is like this, like a cone. And imagine this like a big cone, and imagine the surface of this cone like a sea with waves. Okay, so this, these waves in the sea, is what we could call the conscious mind. So it's the part of your mind that you are conscious of. And then the conscious mind is just in front. There is this other scheme of the mind that is in the other videos. Okay, like this. Where here you have kind of your circumstances. And, uh, you know, and this is another scheme of the mind that you saw before. So this is another scheme which is an ideogram which is just to give you an idea how things work. So, in, o in other words, you have your circumstances, and your circumstances, let us point it, put them as structures that exist in your life, no? C, D, E, all the way to N, no? And then you have the superficial conscious mind, subconscious mind, sorry, subconscious mind, mind, yes, come in, adelante, adelante, yo también, <laughs> So we have the superficial subconscious mind, which basically are those structures that were created in this mechanism, uh, as it was explained in my previous video. Uh, so basically, if you have an structure there, you have an structure there, you know, an A primus, no and a B primus and so on so forth and a C primus this is something that uh, <coughs> if you deal with um, with uh, people that have problems like for example gender violence victims right that are ill-treated uh, women you will see that obviously if there is a person that is ill treating that person which is a structure in the in this is the line of circumstances and you take away you know the 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 partner or whatever that is doing bad treatments to this person and you take this person away uh, because that's what people do immediately uh, and you know you you get this person in a house where you uh, you you get her you keep her and everything and you take this person out of the way this woman goes out to a bar uh, one day and she meets another one I, it's immediate so basically what is happening is that your circumstances are always reflecting your patterns. The same pat the patterns you have in your mind created uh, uh, in this lifetime by all these mechanisms are replicated outside. <coughs> I try to explain this just to remind you, for example, you are born 
at a certain moment uh, with a tendency of complaining okay you so you are born with a tendency and you are born with that tendency and so you are the typical uh, child that is cries a lot so you are born and you know you feel hungry and you cry and say you are born with uh, in a family where you have a mother which is hyper protective you know a mother that protects the child permanently and so you cry you you feel hungry you cry your mother goes and takes you from the how do you call the the, the cradle takes you from the cradle and uh, does like this and uh, gives you something to eat or whatever the case might be and then and then you hear a door banging and you cry and your mother goes and takes care of you so you you react to certain circumstances you bring that tendency and you react to certain circumstances complaining and you start complaining just by crying uh, like when we were doing the tests with the dogs before so you know you just have that tendency and that tendency is confronted with a, an environment where you have a protective mother and so you are born with zero years and you know one day after the other you keep crying and your mother keeps going and you keep crying your mother keeps going and you develop a mechanism in your mind that basically says if i feel bad i cry and my mama comes and takes care of me so you go from there from zero years to three years and then they put you in the kindergarten because your mother works and then she has to go to work so you go to the kindergarten you go to the kindergarten you don't feel well and you cry but it happens that in the kid kindergarten, the teacher is not like your mommy, uh, an hyperprotective mother. It's more, um, pff, I don't mind, I mean, if you cry. So you start crying and there's nobody there. You don't have a mother there to take care of you. But in that kindergarten, there are other girls like you of three years old. And more than probably, one of those girls was born with the same tendency you were born so she was born with this tendency of complaining uh, so you know like you when she felt hungry she cried when she heard a door banging she cried but she was born with a mother that was um, like the teacher of this kindergarten i don't care if you cry so this this little girl had this tendency that i cry nobody comes and i cry nobody comes so the negative of the other girl but because she has this tendency she will develop a behavior based on the negative of the behavior of the other girl do you follow me what i'm trying to say more or less well which is basically when these two girls are in the kindergarten after the first three years of experience they had and they are in the kindergarten of the same neighborhood uh, this girl the girl that cries with a mother that doesn't care and the girl that cries with a mother that is all the time taking care uh, she is crying the teacher is not making and is not giving her any attention and this other girl the the girl that cries with a mother that doesn't give attention recognizes the situation that she has already lived she has a similar pattern and she recognizes the situation so she goes there that you are crying because she identifies with you and she takes care of you so what happens is that your circumstances and your tendencies and the patterns created in your mind and your circumstances kind of grow together it's a flower that grows together it's not that you have become what you are independently you have become what you are 
as you have been modeling your circumstances through your behavior in answering to the circumstances that you are placed in according to the tendencies that you bring. That's understood? So this repeated situation creates patterns, patterns of behavior, no? And what happens is that your circumstances, the circumstances that you are living today, and your patterns, your superficial mind patterns, are like a mirror one of each other because they have grown together. That is understood. And so when you are looking outside and you are watching your life, if you don't like it, you don't like yourself. Because in fact, you are surrounded by your own little set of patterns. It's understood that, no? Right, so this is the superficial subconscious mind. Then there is this big part, which is the subconscious mind. Now, <coughs> if you picture the mind as information, so if you imagine yourself the mind as the information gathered, you know, if you remember the string that you pulled and you had your father and you pulled and you have the parents of your, the parents of your parents of your parents of your parents and how in each of these steps you've been learning so learning is the same thing as accumulating information in fact there is a, um, a physical law a physical principle which is that information is never lost. So uh, two atoms of hydrogen have this information. One atom of water has more information because it's the combination of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. With that extra information, you can do something as water but the information that was there in the atoms of hydrogen and in the atom of oxygen is still there in the atom of water. So the information is never lost, it only adds up, right? So imagine the mind as, from the beginning, this would be the Big Bang, okay? So this would be the Alpha, the Big Bang, the beginning. If you pull the string, you arrive to the beginning. We saw that yesterday. So uh, you start having, from the primal atom, you start having experiences, you know, as an hydrogen atom, as a water, as this, as that, the mineral. As Guruji used to say, the mineral, the plant, the animal and the human. So you evolve in this long process of evolution. Do you follow me? Yes. You evolve through this long process of evolution, just gathering more and more information and more information and more information and more information. Most of this subconscious mind, you know, imagine up to here, is collective. Is what Jung called the collective subconscious. In fact, Jung, Jung, Carl Jung called this the collective unconscious. And Guruji corrected it is the collective subconscious because everything is conscious. 
but this is below, sub below your conscious mind. But it's not that it is unconscious, because this is conscious, because this has information. So most of it is the collective subconscious. And then the final part of this is what we could call the, the superficial subconscious and the deep subconscious. The deep subconscious is patterns that are there deeply implanted in your mind but that somehow have not manifested themselves as patterns in your actual life. In other words, the superficial subconscious mind is created in this lifetime but these are pieces of information that you have from other lifetimes. Now, to understand this without believing in other lifetimes, because you don't need to believe in other lifetimes. In fact, uh, uh, Guruji in his teachings uh, always added, if you believe in other lifetimes, this is how you can interpret it. If you believe, you don't need to believe. But without believing in other lifetimes, how this is happening? Why there is certain patterns that are in your deep subconscious that only belong to you? In other words, they are individualized. So this is information because all this is information. So it's like a sea of information of which you only are conscious of the super surface of that sea which is your conscious thoughts the thoughts you are conscious of but you are not conscious of the mechanism that creates these thoughts these are the superficial currents that create the waves and these are the deep currents you know that create like in the oceans that create kind of the big currents the big movements you know like the gulf current that affects cl climate not not weather but climate so what is this deep subconscious mind where does it come from well it comes from <coughs> you can easily picture it in your mind in the following way um, if you pull the string If you <coughs> remember the story of the string, okay, so this is you, I, and then this is your parents, the parents of your parents, and so on and so forth, and you keep pulling the string of parents, and you reach to the beginning, and you reach to the beginning, which today is accepted that it's the Big Bang. Think about that um, today we understand uh, this universe in this way because this is what we've been told the universe is in the school, at our homes. But a thousand years ago, uh, they understood this in a completely different way. They, a thousand years ago, your, the parents of your parents of your parents, a thousand years ago, would think that the, this, this string ended in Adam and Eve and would not be thinking about, by the way, there is some people, there is people there. Let's take it there. Uh, so a thousand years ago, uh, you know your family, the concept they had would be that the earth is flat, that it ends in, you know, the sea ends in a big cascade, that, uh, you know, you, you come from a creator that creates, and you had that cosmovision, because that is what you were told by your parents, by your family, by, that is the information you received. Today you have received another information, and you think this is the real thing. 
But wait 1,000 years. I mean, wait 1,000 years and see what they are told. And this is also untrue, but it's, you know, the, the truth we believe today. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So one have, has to have this concept about thoughts. Thoughts are thoughts. And they, they are pieces of information that we use to, to move around and it's information, but it's not all the information, it's just the information we are handling. But at the end of the day, whatever is the beginning, if you pull that string, you reach to the beginning. And you know, through this process, you have been learning, i.e. acquiring information. Uh, now, if you pull 32 times of this string, okay, 32 times would be year 1000. If we calculate 35 years per generation, you, you, could, you could make it a little bit shorter, but say 32 times is year 1000. Now, 32 times you had uh, how many parents? you had uh, 32 generations ago. Anybody that, that knows mathematics knows that is 2 to the 32. This is about 16,000, uh, you know, round numbers, 16, 16 billion, 16, 16 billion people. You have 16 billion parents you had 16 billion parents on year 2000, 1000. Now in the earth, in year 1000, there were only 700 million people, according to historians. The question is, where are the parents that are missing? <laughs> if, if you try and see how many parents I have in, in year one, you know, in the times of Jesus, well, you had 2 to the 64, I mean, you have two parents, 2 to the 1, four grandfathers, 2 to the 2, uh, 8, sorry, 8, uh, great grandfathers, uh, 4, 8, 8 grandfathers, 2 to the 3, 16, uh, great great grandfathers and so on and so forth so I mean it is if it is 64 generations ago is 2 to the 64 this number is such a big number is so big that if you put it in your calculator or in your iPhone you know you will get one of these numbers that doesn't fit and then it puts you in E it says C elevated to this amount so it's an incredible amount of people because this keeps growing keeps doubling each time keeps doubling each time so where are the parents that are missing i tell you what happens is that when you start pulling of the string in no time we all have the same family in no time we are all family of Julius Caesar, of Cleopatra, and you name it. In no time you are family of the same family. In no time. Because that's how it works. You, you picture the idea in your mind? It means that people marry with each other. <laughs> and in no time they blend with this one that comes with this one you know they say <coughs> they say that uh, it doesn't require more than six steps uh, you know a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend to reach to any person in the world it is something that is typically said no well in reality it doesn't take a lot of pulls of the string to be all of the same family to have the same family, which means, i.e., the same information. So in the very moment you are in the same family, and uh, you know, being of the, say, white race, uh, you very easily become, you know, in no time you are of the same family of the white race, but if you keep polling in no time, 
you are of the same family of the whole human race because you go to the same place and so on and so forth. So once you reach to a common place, that is collective, that you have the same information. So that is information that is there that belongs to the species. But the, there is an information in the surface of the mind that is the individualized part of the mind, which is the way, the, the part of the mind with which you are confronted with reality, which is in this scheme of the mind. <coughs> This would be the universe which you are connected through the senses with an input through the senses and an output through the muscles. This is the muscles. These are the senses. And this is the motor sense system of the mind el sistema sensomotor in Spanish and this is confronted with you know your reality and by confronting this reality through the muscles you act through to the to reality through the senses you perceive reality and through these mechanisms in the in the mind uh, you respond to reality in different behaviors and this at the same time changes your circumstances and creates this movement which is a synchronous movement mm? for you should be easy because I have explained this to you previously for you it's the first time so you must come to a complete course <laughs> So that exp I explain it in Spanish, that I explain it better, <laughs> and uh, and you get the whole picture. But anyhow, you know, we will do our best so that you go with good information. Anyhow, um, these 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 mechanisms that are created here is the superficial. is what in this other scheme is the superficial subconscious which has patterns and these patterns A, B, C and so on and so forth create structures or are or have been created by structures of your circumstances that in fact have grown together now I will explain you how these things grow together, how with your mechanisms you create a circumstance. Uh, there is one way to explain it which is quite easy to understand, which is this one. This is an event, an event happens outside, so you receive the information of this event through your senses, it goes to the memory box, the memory box you know calls to certain structures of information that are there in your previous impressions, so for example you see uh, uh, your husband uh, walking with um, another girl y, y, y esta que ladra ahora ¿qué pasa aquí? silencio joder, no hay manera de grabar este vídeo ¿eh? este vídeo está agafado este vídeo está agafado <coughs> Bueno, a lo mejor editándolo luego bien <ríe> queda algo. Genial. 
uh, an event happens outside and this event goes to your memory box and pulls information that is in your memory box. For example, you are walking in a street, you see your husband with someone, uh, another girl walking with him, smiling, and they are with their hands closed. Okay, so immediately your, this event goes through your senses to your memory box and you get information related to that event. You recognize your husband, you probably don't recognize the woman, but y your mind recognizes her as a bitch, you know, and you say, who's that bitch? <laughs> And then you might recall other memories consciously or subconsciously, other memories of other instances that have been similar in, lo in your life. And this is a kind, it activates an information package of something which is, you know, activated by, call it the energy of this event it activates that information pa package. This information package that is activated by this event depends on the previous impressions in your mind. In other words, if you are a woman in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia and you see your husband walking happily with another woman that you will not recognize because she is in black <laughs> to begin with. Uh, the information that creates is different than if you are in London or in New York and you see the same your husband with another woman, not dressed in black in this case, but even if, if she was dressed in black, you would wonder <laughs> who's that bitch. <laughs> So it's different, which means that, you know, if you are from uh, Saudi Arabia, you might be thinking, oh, look, he's going to marry again, I mean, <laughs> because probably it's her third wife. So it's, uh, you know, it's a different, it activates a different package of information. And this package of information that is activated by the events of your life is dependent on the previous events of your lives. So the previous event of your lives created these impressions, you responded, you reacted to these impressions with your behavior, moving your muscles uh, day by day, and thus uh, influencing these events and in this way, the events and the information that is here kind of is very synchronous. So it's not things that are happening like one thing here and another thing there without nothing to do one with each other. They are completely, it's like a dance in reality. They are completely synchronous. So, for example, the event. The event is, and we will put an example here, imagine that this mind is of a young girl, a young woman of say 22, 23 years old, and the event is my boyfriend told me he was calling me at 9 p.m and it is 11 p.m. and he has not phoned me. Okay, that's the event. My boyfriend, boyfriend hasn't phoned. So, you know, I phone at 11 o'clock, at 11 p.m. and the telephone is disconnected. I phone again at one o'clock and the telephone is disconnected. I get anxious and I phone again at two o'clock and the phone is disconnected. And I continue phoning during all night until say three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning 
I get asleep by then and the following morning I phone the telephone is connected and I have a conversation with my boyfriend so this is the event okay now the event the event creates two kinds of thoughts conscious thoughts which are created by subconscious patterns and these patterns are you know structures of information gathered by previous events you follow the okay so the event happens and you have conscious thought that are subject so these conscious thoughts are created somehow or the currents that create these conscious thoughts are these subconscious patterns and being the conscious thoughts like the waves is it understood like that okay now there is a, something that is pulling there is an energy that is pushing all this so in this scheme this is the universe and this is the mind so in the same way that there is an, a universe in front of your senses uh, with, with which you act through your muscles eh, there is a universal mind which is like the universe but of information so this is kind of this this universal mind of information that in, in this other scheme was the cone so you have all this information which is like the ocean like this ocean that has currents you know that pushes pushes this push, pushes this there is a, an energy that pushes you there is an energy that pushed you to walk an energy that pushed you to speak an energy that pushes you every morning to wake up and live one day that energy that pushes you which is the same energy that moves that moves your molecules is uh, um, the energy of the universe it's you can call it the shakti the prana the grace it's what the real doer of everything that is happening so that energy if you perceive this energy directly what you perceive is love that's why they say that god is love and love is god but anyhow this energy is pushing and this energy which is and the energy of life you feel it so one thing is what you feel and another thing is what you think so this energy is pulling which is love then the event happens the energy is pulling the event happens these patterns that are in the mind uh, condition what are going to be your conscious thoughts and these conscious thoughts are conditions on your subconscious patterns so imagine this girl thinks my boyfriend doesn't love me my boyfriend is with another girl or my boyfriend is going to leave me so imagine this girl this is an imaginary girl that this event that has happened his boyfriend hasn't phoned at 9 p.m when he agreed to phone 
creates these thoughts in her that, you know, keep coming. My boyfriend doesn't love me. My boyfriend is with another girl and, and, and she, she thinks it, this while she feels fearful and maybe jealous. My boyfriend is going to leave me and she keeps thinking this and I'm going to lose him and he's so nice and I'm not going to find uh, such a nice boy ever. So all these thoughts are happening uh, activated by this event uh, and this depends on certain subconscious patterns that obviously you have certain feelings of inadequacy because you know if if you think that my boyfriend is with another girl or my boyfriend is going to leave me and this is this goes blended with the idea that you will never find a boyfriend as good as him well what is happening there is that you don't feel adequate for your boyfriend and you say look if i lose this one i mean i'm not going to find another like him because this is like the lottery you know that i won the lottery <laughs> because i am not adequate for him because if you feel not adequate but more than adequate well, you know, if your boyfriend, you know, it's up to him. He's going to lose, not you. So it depends. So there might be here, you know, patterns of inadequacy, insecurity, you name it. Whatever were the events that happened in the past that created the impressions and the way you reacted to those impressions and whatever were the currents that were pushing you will determine what kind of structure is in this subconscious structure. That's understood? Right, so these structures of the mind create an emotion. Now, to make a reference to what Guruji used to say about this was light, there is only one light, which is love, like, which is white, like love, no? So there is only one light, and it's white, and that is love. But this light goes through the prism of mind and creates the rainbow of emotions. So... To explain it, behind the fear to die is love to life and the mind telling you, yes, but you are going to die and it's going to be very hard and nobody, you are, it's going to be painful <laughs> and maybe the devil is going to get you <laughs> and then you have fear to die. But that's the mind in between the love. Love is the energy pushing and then the prism is the mind. So this energy that pushes is love and then the mind, which is this structure, creates the emotion. That's understood? Now the emotion, because the energy is what makes things work, the emotion is the energy well, in, in, in origin, love, but then became an emotion, is the energy that determines the behavior. Because you perceive the universe through the senses, and you act over the universe, moving your muscles with your behavior. And your behavior is intimately related to your sense of being an I. Because it is you, you know, that you are, when you see your husband walking with another girl in the other side of the road, it is you that is going to cross the road and, you know, and <laughs> smack or the husband or the girl or whatever it is. Or it is you, the one that is going to feel mm, like this and a height so that he doesn't see you you know it depends it depends on what information is is at at movement there 
So this emotion is going to create the behavior, and then through the behavior, you affect to the event, and the, the way you affect the event determines your next circumstances. So to understand it, for example, in this example, uh, these thoughts create an emotion of jealousy, say, you feel jealous, frustrated, and angry. So with that emotion, all this jealousy, frustration, and anger, you move your muscles and call your boyfriend. The next day, the next morning at 11 o'clock, your boyfriend gets the telephone and the conversation starts. And you start asking, where were you? <laughs> and, you know, imagine the conversation. An angry, jealous, and frustrated woman, 23, calls the boyfriend and is going to throw, to spill, all that that goes with it. You picture it? It's easy to picture, right. Now, think it from the place of the boyfriend. It doesn't matter what the boyfriend was doing. The boyfriend, for example, mm, might have, you know, mm, finished his work that day and he was walking in the streets and met with his old girlfriend and they stopped to have a coffee and one thing got took to the other thing and they ended up, you know, having a, a night, a night stand. Nothing important, probably it was just, you know, for the, the two find that that had finished, but, you know, they had a night stand. Or the boyfriend could, maybe, it happens many times with men, uh, gone with a prostitute. And, you know, he wanted to go with a prostitute, so he went with a prostitute. Or uh, the boyfriend, maybe, mm, he was mm, sacked from his job uh, that day, so he left the job and he was so anxious and so confused about the situation that he decided to shut the phone down and you know and walk and think about it or the boyfriend uh, uh, might have arrived home and his mother called that the grandmother is lost and she has Alzheimer so he was looking for the grandmother and the phone lost the batteries and he had no batteries and he had been all night looking for the grandmother or the boyfriend might just simply forgot about it and uh, you know he never called and the battery was off the phone and he forgot about it it doesn't matter at all what the boyfriend was doing in other words it doesn't matter at all if these thoughts reflect any reality about the boyfriend what is for sure is that after this call, after this behavior, your boyfriend, my boyfriend doesn't love me, loves you a little bit less. Think about it. Eh? Whatever the boyfriend was doing, you picture it? Can you picture it? It's easy to picture. Your boyfriend probably is thinking at a certain moment in that conversation, shouldn't I find another girl? <laughs> My boyfriend is with another girl. My boyfriend is going to leave me. And for sure, the boyfriend, whatever he had been doing, is going to think during that conversation, maybe I should leave this woman. If this behavior is repeated enough times and it's repeated enough times because different events whatever the event is react with this pattern and this pattern conditions this behavior you are going to make reality your thoughts your boyfriend is not going to love you anymore 
your boyfriend is going with another girl and obviously he's leaving you. So that is how the events or circumstances that you are in are completely dependent on the mechanisms of the mind and the emotions that they generate and love is moving it all but once it goes through the mind it becomes emotion, behavior and this conditioned uh, situation. That's understood? Okay. So, <coughs> what can we do then? What is the situation then? We have a situation that from the practical point of view <coughs> what you have is the day you have to leave. Remember that the rest is in your mind. The rest doesn't exist for anybody at all. English. Eh? Night. Ah, night. True, true. Night. <laughs> ah, my God. <laughs> night. And night. So what, what we have really is one day. This day and the circumstances we are confronted in, in this day are there through a long, long process of evolution. To begin with, the, your own evolution, since the universe started to, to the day where you were born, and then the evolution of the lives of each of the days that have created these superficial patterns in your subconscious mind, that have created these this circumstances in which you are placed, and these circumstances in which you are placed are exactly what you need or what you require or the same thing, there is no difference between your circumstances and your patterns. So you are placed in this day and you can move your muscles and that's the actions you do and that's karma yoga. You think about things and this is, this is karma yoga, this is jnana yoga. And jnana means discrimination, discernment, to discriminate between what is real and what is unreal in the last instance, but to begin with to discriminate. So, thought, which is one of our, uh, and of course you feel things, okay? And thought is the <coughs> most powerful tool that we have. And we can use thought usefully or unusefully. The problem is that we tend to use thought unusefully. Now, in order to use thought usefully, there are many teachings there um, of Guruji that explain how to do this. And there are many teachings there of Guruji uh, that uh, really uh, point to other teachings that can be used from other people to that support, that go to the same aim. For example, Um, whenever you have an unhappy thought, this um, 
I really by memory don't know the reference uh, take into consideration that this is a video for meditation teachers of Guru Raj's organization so of all around the world so I don't know the reference but you know it's it, it, it will be in the documentation attached <laughs> to these videos but there is this reference that is in many many satsangs which is basically says paraphrasing it whenever you have an unhappy thought ask yourself if it is true so if you have a thought that makes you unhappy For example, in this example of the girl, my boyfriend is going to leave me. Ask yourself if it is true. Because you might be thinking this, but one thought never goes together. It goes with a bunch of thoughts, a bunch of a miscellania of thoughts around the same topic so my boyfriend is going to leave me goes together and I am not going to find someone as good and you know as good and mm, nobody is going to love me ever so this goes together with so if this if it to, to create a pattern of thoughts that make you unhappy, it's always a, a blend, a mixture of thoughts that keep coming one after the other. So, ask yourself, this that is making you unhappy, this that is creating an unhappy emotion, is it true? Because what happens in reality is that this is not true what happens is that if you feel unhappy emotions is the way that the system has to tell you that what you are thinking is not true the, well, this is not true well any anything you think is never true but this is particularly more never true because it is harming you. And if you keep on thinking about these things, you are going to be left without boyfriend because you are going to affect. One has to be, in other words, very careful with what you think. Because if you think these kind of thoughts that create these unhappy emotions, eventually you are going to create these circumstances for you. So <laughs> you have to be very careful with what you thought, with what you think. In other words, you attract the same energy to your life as the energy contained in those thoughts. This is another thing that is in many, many satsangs. So this is like the, this is what creates creates this stress. Stress is created by these thoughts. Stress is something that is created in the body to protect you from a danger. For example, if you go to the I suppose many people in America will know the San Fermin's where you have to run in front of bulls right so you know you are there in the street and you the chupinazo the there is this rocket. thing this rocket and then the bulls are left and then you have to run and all these stress hormones all these stress reaction uh, you know generates you know the tension in the body you get tense and you run and you run you run to escape the bull and you run and when the bull you know when you've run and the bull has already been taken away two or three minutes after all this stress disappears because the danger has disappeared so this is what could be called the good stress the stress that just is there when it's needed and it's there because it is needed so that you escape the bull 
In this case, the bull is the thoughts. So the stress or the unhappy emotions will be there while the thought is there, while you believe that your thoughts are true. In, uh, in psychotherapy, they use an example which is the following. Imagine I look at your feet and I say, Elena, don't move. There is a viper by your foot. And you look down and you see a viper. You know, bzzz. what would be the emotion? Stress. Well, fear. Fear. fear yeah. Stress. Fear. So I say, don't move, don't move. No? And I start walking towards you little by little, little by little. And I go there and I do like this and say, oh, it's a plastic. Plastic viper. What happens with the fear in that moment? Disappear. Disappears immediately. Yeah. It disappears immediately once you realize that the thought is not true. So one of the most important things that you have to do with your thoughts in Jnana Yoga is realize that they are not true. That is why Jnana Yoga is also called the path of Neti Neti. Not this, not this. Which means that you have to develop the ability to realize that thoughts are thoughts, not the reality. And that thoughts are thoughts and are there produced by events and it depends on the previous impressions and patternings in your mind. It depends what kind of thoughts is created by a, an event. So, for example, I am a supporter of Real Madrid. Everybody knows Real Madrid, even in, <laughs> in the USA and Barcelona, no? So, I am a supporter of Real Madrid, and I am, in fact. And Ronaldo scores a goal, and I get happy. And I cannot avoid it, because I have patterns and previous impressions that make me become happy automatically if Ronaldo scores a goal. And if Messi scores the goal, I am unhappy. But my same me, if I had been born in Barcelona, and my father was from Barcelona, I would have the same thing, but in negative. So I would be happy if Messi scores the goal, and unhappy if Ronaldo scores the goal. In other words, that thoughts are thoughts, are not, they are not the reality, they are just a product of previous patternings and you know it's just a superficial phenomena that has nothing to do with the whole thing and the reality has to do with the whole thing so um, I think that for this video is enough because well no I cannot so let us see what do we do with thoughts what do we do with thoughts so thoughts no I'm, I'm writing this <laughs> Es así, ¿no? Right. Thoughts. Now, there are mm, several techniques to do with thoughts. The basic one, easy to follow and simple, is balance thoughts. Thoughts during one day are like a bank account. If you have a positive thought, it's like putting money in your bank account. If you have negative thoughts, it's like drawing money from your, from your bank account. 
So if you have positive thoughts and then negative, negative, negative thoughts and then positive thoughts and then negative, negative, negative thoughts and then positive thoughts. By the end of the day, when you arrive at the end of the day, if you are in red, so if you have more negatives than positives, then is when you end up your day feeling empty, feeling that you've lost your time, feeling that life is miserable, and things of the like. So you have to learn to balance when you... You have to be aware or mindful, aware or mindful, which is the word that is used today, Guruji used the word aware, awareness. But mindfulness, mindful means the same thing. If you are mindful of what you are thinking without judging, but mindful of what you are thinking, and you've been 20 seconds, you know, <coughs> thinking thoughts that are negative. And why you know they are negative? Because they create a negative emotion. They make you unhappy or angry or you name it. They contract you. They are stressful. They contract. You do like this with your face or you might, you know, press your teeth one with each other. Uh, they contract you. They stress you. So if they are negative for 20 seconds, spend the next 25 seconds. thinking positive thoughts and there are many ways to do this you can for example um, see the good side of it everything has a good side so you say they have told you that you are going to be sacked and you are thinking oh I'm going to be sacked they are going to suck me next month and what I'm going to do, I'm not going to find a job and you realize that you've been thinking 15 seconds negatively which means you, you get contracted by this thought well the next 25 seconds think positively about the same situation in this example could be well if I am sucked I didn't like the job in any case so you know, it is an opportunity to find a new job that I can like more. Um, in fact, I didn't like this town that I am living and I want to go to another town. So this is the moment I can go to another town or I'm going to have the, uh, you know, the whatever money they give me. And with this, I'm going to start a business because I'm going to be, you know, whatever they suck me, but they have to give me some sort of of lay of money or whatever so think about the positive things or if your mind is unable to find positive things about that repeat your mantra or or make a prayer so you've been thinking negatively about your or they are sucking you the next 25 seconds you pray you can do our father for example or many other thing or repeat your mantra or do guru shakti for 25 seconds but if you balance positive and negative and you learn how to do this in a gentle way in a, and you flow through life through your day because your life is just your day and you learn to handle your thoughts and to you know start looking at things from different perspectives little by little you you acquire more more grades of freedom more degrees of freedom you you become you little by little become more free more free more free till you are totally free so this is the the main technique to do with thoughts uh, and in the next video we will go into detail uh, with respect to other techniques to deal with thoughts like for example this uh, teaching of Guru Raj, which is very many satsangs, which is if the fault of 
if the faults you see in others are good enough, I'm paraphrasing, are good enough to realize that there are your own faults and then you do something about them, about your own faults, then they are good for something. So when you see faults in others, remember, look at yourself to see exactly <laughs> what are you seeing of yourself in that other and then do something about it with yourself.